Hi guys, from my photo booth. I'm doing the Wednesday lesson of the day, so today is Wednesday, October 26th or 27th, I'm not sure which one. But uh, Halloween is coming up, and this lesson of the day has nothing to do with Halloween. So uh, the things I was gonna go over today they're too controversial. I just can't do it. But uh, I'm going to go over it quickly, just like nasal labial fold stuff. But also, um, just so everybody knows from now, when you see my Halloween costumes, if you're offended by them, you suck and life will never be good for you. So uh, we are working on them. And I got a rotating base here so I can actually spin around as we do this lesson of the day. So Lesson of the day today is about nasal labial folds and people always wonder how to treat them and a patient reminded me that I had said something in the past, see the base is rotating. So they had, this thing doesn't stop, oh shit, wrong direction. Okay, okay, so, um, have a remote control. So uh, I talked about nasal labial folds before but did not finish as to the various treatments and problems that we see in nasal labial folds. So uh, the first thing I would say is uh, the explanation of a nasal labial fold, I think is most important. So when you see the nasal labial fold over here, the reason it occurs on most people is just general drooping of the face. And we have uh, pendular drooping, which means nobody ages in the X or just the Y. It's usually an X, Y combination. And then when you get to the neck, it's an X, Y, and Z. So there's actually things that change in the other, um, in the other dimension. So nasal labial folds, they tend to get worse as the face comes down and you get a line over here called the nasal jugal groove or the middle septum. You get nasal labial fold and you get your pre-jowl fold going into your pre-jowl sulcus. Uh, those parallel each other. When you lift, you're generally going perpendicular to those. So these fall about 50 degrees to 60 degrees and the lift is usually about 70 degrees, kind of in that range. So, um, that is how it forms on most people. However, other people also lose volume over time and that tends to worsen the shadow. And the shadows on the face form not just from uh, shadowing that goes from top down, but it's because of the way it reflects around folds. So you actually get deeper nasal labial folds if you're hollow above because it reflects above and it looks darker below. So it's a combination of shadow and reflection. A little bit different. Uh, all of this gets better when you lay down and you're on your back. That's why people like doing missionary position because their partner looks fantastic laying on their back. So this is not a fact, by the way. Uh, easiest way to improve these things is lifting, volumizing, or tightening. These are the logical ways. Lifting means you do a facelift and you physically actually bring it up to here. And I tell all my patients, and I'm talking fast because Vinicius Neves, who's my friend from Brazil, is waiting for me at Century City. So. Uh, he just got here from Brazil. So you lift up and I tell him, it's never gonna go to this, it'll kind of come back down to this. They say, why doctor? I kind of want it to be here. And the reason is if you ever go to this, well, first of all, you'll look like a freak, but the other reason is your face won't be able to move in the opposite direction. Your face has to move in both directions. So patients after surgery, they always go like this. They say, look, I still have this. I say, well, yeah, imagine you didn't have that. And if it were tight when you're like this, as soon as you stretch, you're limited and you can never flex upward. So uh, you have to have mobility in both directions. But number one, facelift, that gets it up. Number two, volumization. If you wanna uh, improve the nasal labial fold, the only place on the face where you can actually get a visible lift from a small amount of filler is the under eye. So yes, you can lift the face from expanding the head to extraordinary amounts and making people look weird, but realistically, if you put very, very small amounts over here, it will cause a lift against the nasal labial fold for most people. Some people actually have flattening of this entire area and collapse, I call this, the, well, superficial malar fat pad, but also the nasal sidewall, you have a fat pad there. And if uh, somebody has hollowing here, which if you smile, you'll see they have an indent here that occurs, um, you can actually fill that as well. But it's a high rate of vascular occlusion, so you have to be careful and do it with a cannula. Never do it with a needle there. Uh, so filling under here, filling possibly there, even above the nasal labial fold sounds crazy, but it might make the nasal labial fold better then you fill into the nasal labial fold itself. So this is a filler technique. You really wanna start high above, get it lifted against, and then go down here if you have to, and then you can skip to small amounts here. Generally, you can rejuvenate the whole face on most people with one cc on the anterior mid face, sometimes two cc's for the anterior mid face. This is not including cheeks and jaw and all that kind of stuff. So one milliliter is generally enough. Skin tightening is the other good option. Skin tightening, there's a whole slew of them and I'll tell you what to avoid. So there are devices like Accutite 
and uh, FaceTight and Thermi RF, which are wand based devices. And the intention there, the intent there is to put the wand in and shrink the nasolabial fold down by melting the fat out. Not a good idea because it's a terrible idea. That's why it's not a good idea. The reason is unless you're overgrafted, you'd be deflating the face and causing indentations there and visibly actually get no improvement because laterally you have a volume deficit above collapse. The worst thing you can do is cause more of a volume deficit right there. Not a good move. People who do that generally don't fully understand the aging of the face. That's kind of why they do it. They don't understand why the nasal labial fold exists. And this is why we're giving this lesson of the day because there's all this other crazy stuff done. So I'm telling you the safe stuff first. Radio frequency treatments with Morpheus, Profound, those make the biggest difference in the nasal labial fold. Profound you do it once, Morpheus probably like four or five times. They both work great. Um, Profound is a new one coming out called Matrix. That's gonna be fantastic, but also not as good as regular Profound for nasal labial fold. Thread lifts don't cause any predictable volume or collagen improvement in your face, no matter what people say. The reality is it, it doesn't, but they can get a little bit of squeeze. It doesn't lift anything. It just causes compression or swelling in the face. So you can get an improvement with that for maybe like six months. Uh, I'm sure there are longer lasting results that exist, but it's not a consistent, like 100% of people get that. So assume if you do a thread lift, you get a small improvement, not long, not long lasting, the radio frequency, type stuff is most likely gonna be more consistent. Not that a thread lift can't get an improvement. I just don't like placing threads in mobile areas of the face where you're smiling because it limits your smile if you put enough to make an improvement. Also not my preference, but whatever. If you wanna do it, you do it. So what are bad things? Bad things are trying to get rid of the nasolabial fold like it's herpes or a disease or something bad. Nasolabial fold is not bad, it's natural. It just gets exaggerated over time. So you have to unexaggerate it. And you can't do that by facing it like a monkey or getting rid of it or excising it. So number one terrible thing to do is an excision. You shall not, it's like an 11th commandment, you sh thou shalt not excise the nasal labial fold. That's a cancer treatment and on cancer patients it never looks fantastic, although it does fix cancer defects. So it's good for cancer defects. Never cut out the nasal labial fold. Never try to shrink away the nasal labial fold. Now that's fat reduction I'm talking about. If you shrink with skin tightening, totally fine because you keep the volume underneath. That's the important part. The other thing, don't fill it with permanent things. So you don't want to put in there a Gore-Tex implant. Gore-Tex implant is fairly common. So is Alloderm, so are like Medpore things. People put implants in there. Don't do that. It's a constantly changing dynamic area. It needs to move. You don't want something solid in there. You're gonna age, things are gonna change. And what happens when you put those things in there, the nasal labial fold tends to get broader. It doesn't go away, it gets broader and boxy. If you keep adding filler in there, it gets broader and boxy. If you put silicone in there or bio whatever or aqua whatever, all those names that are silicone polymers also gets boxy. So these things are not good moves and it feels tough and your smile is gonna get limited again as you go up. So not a good move. So no implant, no this, no that. Now, injections, the way you can do them, you can put them deep if you wanna pop out the piriform aperture. You don't need to do that, but you can. You just better be damn good so you don't get vascular occlusion. Otherwise you put like the smallest amount over there and you're fantastic. So what am I missing here? Other weird things I've heard of. I think I got it all. And I do have to run and see my friend. So do you recommend cheek implants? Good question. I do not love cheek implants. I uh, send them, I'm not that good at them. Maybe that's why. So I send them to Karan Deer to do them. Uh, I, I think he does less than he used to as well. Cheek implants, they really build on the soft, the uh, bony skeleton. And most people don't actually need to build on this bony skeleton. Uh, they usually need a combination of small amount of bone augmentation, small amount of soft tissue. So filler is better for that. Cheek implants have a high rate of removal. So it's not that they have a huge infection rate. It's decent. Not that they have a huge uh, revision rate because they move around. It's decent rate. Those are decent. They're not like shocking, but it has a very high rate of removal, meaning people become unhappy with them now or 20 years from now. Because what happens if you lose volume in the face? It starts to show that you have this prominent bony ass cheek, but then you have no soft tissue cushioning around it, it ages you, not fantastic. Same as if you hollow out the eyelids. Yeah, you got rid of the skin, but then you're aging somebody in a different way. Same as you lift the brow, you can hollow them, and sure you got an arc, but then you age them. So you gotta 
be tasteful about this kind of stuff. So I am uh, not so keen on doing cheek implants, but I have nothing against them. I have done them. And in some patients, they're fantastic. You just got to know how to keep them in place because they do tend to move a bit. It's a very dynamic area of the face. So just sliding them in a pocket, which is what I used to do, not a great idea. Um, you learn as you get older and I am old now. So let's see. So does under eye filler help to lift the face? Yes, that's what we were saying. It helps to lift against the nasolabial folds. It's not a true lift. So lift means this, it's a physical lift. Thread lifting is not a true lift. Skin tightening is not a true lift. Only lifting actually lifts. However, you can change the shadowing on the face and it's very complex, the shadowing on the face. There's light reflection, there's shadows, there's all these different lights, there's light cancellation. Uh, which is what's happening now. If you see if my skin looks good, it's light cancellation. There's no filter on this. It's that I'm in my photo studio and I have these lights around me. So it's canceling the shadows on my face. So I'm not throwing shadows anywhere really, except for my tired under eyes. And you can tell what the lighting is by looking in my eyes. So if you look in the eyes, you can see, what do you see? That's a ring, it's a ring light. If you look really closely, you'll also see two boxes on the side. So there's box lights right there. Um, so, you can't really physically lift with these kind of things, but it does change the shadow so it looks lifted. There was a research study done, which I forgot who did it. It was like two years ago. It showed that the only place on the face that actually shows a kind of lift is the under eye. So yes, if you expand the face out and hit the wall, you can cause a lift because you stretched out the face, but that's not a tasteful way to do it. So I uh, realized all the things are possible, not fantastic. So as far as buccal fat removal goes, different area. That's a pre-jowl folded effect. So buccal fat is a gliding uh, smooth fat pad that is a type of fat that exists in your globe, which is these fat bags that you have here and these ones up there. And uh, parts of your submentum have this smooth gliding fat, but it's typically just those two areas. It's a very valuable fat pad that we call stem cell rich, not because it has stem cells, but because it can grow over time, which is different than a lot of the face fat that atrophies over time. So um, buckle fat pad sits right in front of your masseter. If you feel that muscle and clench, it sits right in front of that. And it supports this area here, which is your nasal labial fold coming down to your jowls, basically, and your pre-jowl fold. So it supports this whole melolabial fold. Uh, if you get rid of the buckle fat pad prematurely in somebody, this melolabial fold, which uh, is sitting here, will fall down and collapse, and you'll get premature and exaggerated darkening or shadowing in the pre-jowl sulcus and the pre-jowl fold pre-jowl fold mainly in the depressor area. So how do you fix that? You can't. Um, you can make it better by adding volume here, but it's very hard to add volume in this mid-cheek. However, recently we have a filler called Profilio, and it is more of a hydrating filler, and you can actually fill that area with that without causing problems. Otherwise, Sculptra, it would make it dense, the area, but it would build bulk there again and then uh, help that area over there. So... Buckle fat removal is a great thing to do if you need it. However, it is largely overdone. So most people don't need it who get it done and then they end up aging a little bit faster specifically because of that and because of hollowing care, which makes your cheek look a little more accent, uh, accented earlier. Um, so that's that. So cosmetic injector brad. So would you recommend straight needling into the dermis layer of the NLF? So nasal labial fold. When I show this, um, Andrew, uh, thank you for the question. No, not gay, but I appreciate it. So um, over here in the nasal labial fold, um, the way to fill it is either you do the deep portion or you do the superficial. So uh, the two easy, safe planes to inject, there's multiple planes. So you can do uh, injection on the nasal base that pops it out. I don't usually do that unless somebody has a big asymmetry in the nasal base like that, then I would do it. That's pretty uncommon. The rest of it is a subdermal injection to treat the fold versus a dermal, intradermal injection to treat the crease. So the nasal labial fold, as we're treating a fold, can be improved by doing a subdermal injection. I like subdermal injections because it's a high yield change, meaning you inject a small amount, big change. The deeper you go, the less effective you change you get on the surface, so you need higher volumes. So I like doing smaller volume. I'm a big fan of small volume injection because you won't affect the function of the face as much. The more water you carry in the face, to some extent, it's gonna start affecting the muscle movement on the face because the muscles are soaked and they get constricted and they can't move. So I like doing small amounts. So the fold, I do a subdermal injection here, needle, cannula, doesn't matter. All you have to know is stay in the subdermis, which is your SMAS. Here there's a SMAS scroll, which is a decusation fiber. So it actually pops out pretty easily. 
And once you get up to the corner, never put your needle under the sill. If your needle ever goes under the sill in the subdermis, you're hitting something called the inferior alar artery, which is an artery that goes across the bottom of the nose. That artery is not that important. You could fill it up with filler, which I've seen at least 12 times, which is a lot in lip lifts. And I'll see and I'll ask the patient, did it ever cause a problem? They said, no. I said, well, uh, there's filler in your artery, like a sausage, it looks like. So um, it does have a good arterial flow around the area anyways, not a big deal. The other is the creases. So you actually form creases in some people. I'm Persian, so I don't really form too much, uh, but lighter skin usually does, uh, some darker skin does too, but you get creases in the skin. Those are like a, a wrinkle line. And that you can do an intradermal injection. And the way you do intradermal injections, so subdermal you can do anti-grade, retrograde, doesn't matter which way. The dermal injections, you have to put your needle in and do a retrograde as you come out. And you don't try to go for the gold on those because you will cause a crystalline appearance and you'll see the filler or you'll feel a bump. So you can't do too much. You just get it a little bit, get it to integrate, get a 50% improvement, call it a day. To get 100% improvement on a lot of people, you have to actually get a dermal epidermal injection and that is going to show. It's going to be a little crystalline appearance, which they call a Tyndall effect incorrectly. Tyndalling is a scattering uh, that happens like when you're looking at like I don't know, like uh, the sunset and you see light scattering of the color changing because you see one color come through. Uh, tindling is an incorrect explanation of what you're seeing. It's actually a reflection through the crystalline water layer of filler uh, blocking the deeper penetration and then it comes back to your eye. It's a different thing either. Way. Um, so that is that. And then let's see any questions. What do you think about the scarless lift? I don't know about those. Surgery for malar festoons. Uh, yes, festoons, complicated. You can do direct excision. You can do radiofrequency. Best way to stimulate collagen. Well, there's a million ways, but best way in your actual, for skin tightening is gonna be profound radiofrequency. Second best is Morpheus. Um, those are the best I like. Which filler is good for the under eye? Restylane. L, which is the classic Restylane. Bellotero is good too, but Restylane lasts a little bit longer, hurts a little bit less. Are you Jewish? Yeah. Uh, filler for marionettes or wait for facelift. Either one, that's what we're talking about here. You can do either one. Under chin fat pocket, liposuction or something else. Uh, depends on the fat. So outer fat, inner fat, very different. Doki uh, John, Sam Alaikum. Salam Alaikum. Yeah, there you go. Saludos desde Argentina. Yo blen aviso hialurónico con oro y un poco de sculpture. Okay, so um, I, that's amazing. So she blends, or he, Ezekiel, sorry, he uh, blends hyaluronic acid gel with gold and a little sculpture. That's that's a nice mix. I would like gold in my face. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, lots of questions. Do you do eyebrow lift where your forehead be smaller? Depends on the different ones. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Are you still in a relationship? No, uh, Dr. John, I love you, thank you. What is the answer to downward corners of the mouth? That's a whole nother thing. How do you deal with jowls and smash? Kind of what we're talking about here. And fantastic. Okay, so I think I will go meet Vina Vinicius Neves, who is, uh, he's now a race car driver and he is at Century City Shopping Mall waiting for me, so I'll go pick him up. And I hope everybody has a fantastic night. And I will post this in case anybody thinks what I said was credible. <laughs>